Hey y'all, the following podcast was recorded live at LeakyCon Orlando earlier this year. It stars Chris Rankin, Mike from Potterless, and Charlie and Hannah from the Goblet of Wine podcast. We had so much fun with them, and so we hope that you enjoy this hour or so. Uh, if you would like to go to a LeakyCon, there is still another one coming this year. It is in Denver, Colorado, October 14th through 16th. You can get all the details at LeakyCon.com. We're going to see Luke Youngblood there. Devin Murray, Stan Ayanevsky, uh, Chris Rankin will be there again. We're going to have a lot of your favorite YouTubers and TikTokers. It's going to be a ton of fun. We can't wait to see you to celebrate this community. Uh, also, I should tell you, we're having a really big sale at mischiefmerch.com. That's our site where we sell all sorts of geeky merchandise, mugs, other types of things that you can fully own your enthusiasm, as we call it. You can use the code end of season 50 at checkout on orders of $50 or more or end of season 100 that's end of season 100 at checkout on orders more than $100 and you will get 20 or 30% off respectively. We're we're really running giant sales to just clear everything out because we want to start fresh for the fall. So go check it out. Again, that's mischiefmerch.com and the sale runs through September 22nd. Okay, that's it for me. Go enjoy the show. Oh, hello. We made it. I'm seeing you. How about that? Welcome, welcome. Confused everywhere. Okay. <laughs> cool, great. <laughs> um, welcome to LeakyCon Pottercast, a.k.a. Melissa without John and Frack, which is very <laughs> sad. John and Frack both had, uh, well, Frack had some professional obligations and John had some family obligations this weekend, so they couldn't be with us, and it's... Weird and sad. However, look who I've got with me. I've got Mr. Chris Rankin. Hey, oh. Mike Schubert, our dear friend who can kill a karaoke tune <laughs> yes. like no one else's business. Yes, he can. And Charlie and Hannah from the Goblet of Wine podcast, one of my very favorite. So as is the, the, the norm at, at Pottercasts at Leaky, it tends to be the end of the convention. We're all wrecked. We're all getting ready to say goodbye to each other. So we're just going to keep this very chill. We're going to play some games. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do some talks. So tell me about your weekend. I feel like I'm actually on a talk show right now. <laughs> like the view, <laughs> way better. <laughs> Well, let's start over yeah, here with, start with, over the, here. with the leaky newcomers. Oh, yeah, the ah, leaky babies. That's right. I'm sorry. Okay, I, listen. I, I am so excited that y'all are excited to be at LeakyCon. When y'all put up your video <laughs> about getting asked to LeakyCon, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. They, like, you, you, re you really had a... Po also a positive reaction to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We were watching High School Musical and didn't expect to end up having to pause it and just sob halfway through. Yeah. Wait, I always sob uh, halfway through High School Musical. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the best weekend of my life the, for the past like 10 years has been LeakyCon 2012. The only other one I've ever been able to go to in Chicago. And, and I think this one has just blown that out of the water. Um, I, yeah, I, uh, no, I don't want to cry, <laughs> but like, yeah, no, this has been incredible. Finally meeting all of the people that we've been talking to for so long, both like other podcasters and creators and people that listen to us and people that are in our discord and meeting so many new people as well and really getting to be reminded of that community spirit and why I love the Harry Potter fandom so much and why it does feel like home because it's, it's felt really difficult for a really long time. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I don't even know what to say because I'm so overwhelmed. I, I watched LeakyCon happening growing up and never even dreamed I would come to America. That's not even, was on my radar of something I could do as a, as a teenager. So I, I just feel like I've walked into a place where I, everyone is my friend. That's the saddest thing I've ever said. <laughs> the most but wonderful like, I've never met. True. It's so true. It's so true. true. I've never it is so met true. such a group of lovely, lovely people. Yeah. Everyone I've met is so lovely. <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool. But I, it's like my favorite place to, to be. Um, and it's, 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 it's been a minute. Uh, it's been a minute. So what's the favorite thing you've done this weekend? Besides the general, you know, being here of it all. 
I mean, our, our live was pretty cool in the way that I thought I was going to vomit before we walked out on stage, but I didn't, so that was good. Um, <laughs> yeah. All the ball was so surreal. Yeah. Um, but well, mostly just meeting everyone. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, either our live show, because it was terrifying and it was such like a the biggest thing that we've done live or honestly the first thing we did we wrote a crack fic with fanatical fix oh we were amazing God. and it was hysterical we literally we met up with them in the morning and we were like um by the way what are we doing what is i know this? we'll just we'll just wing it on stage and honestly we cried through the entire thing and it was like the perfect opener because it just like killed our nerves because we were just yeah. sobbing crying amazing <laughs> that's wonderful what about y'all, veterans? We have newbies and <laughs> veterans on the other end here. Well, I feel like I'm more in the middle. It was funny because the last time I was at a leaky con was Boston, which was wonderful, and that was in late 2019. Yeah. Shout out to the person who wooed. Um, but it was it was an interesting time because like at that point, Potterless was like at its peak, and I had just like entered the stage of being able to do so many more things at leaky con and be a guest, which is just always so cool. And then I, it was just thinking like, great, I'm going to be doing these all the time and I'll keep going and the podcast will go on and then the world happened and now it's like a very different place, like world-wise, I've stopped making the show on a weekly <laughs> basis. Yeah. So it's just like a whole very different thing of like where I thought it would be after doing that Boston one in late 2019 to where we are now. But just being back is just so nice to yeah. see familiar faces and to see new faces and to do all sorts of fun programming whether it's stuff that i submitted or i was just a part of and just getting to meet people whether it's in the marketplace or after events or in the sky bridge as i die in the humidity of florida yeah. walking to and from my hotel room it's just everyone is so nice and and it just reminds me of why i always get got so excited to come to these and and I'm just so fortunate that I'm able to be back and to be with so many lovely people throughout the whole weekend. I think it's, it's been a huge relief this weekend, I think. In a, like, it's been, like, like we said, it's been three years since, yeah. well, since the last Leaky, since Boston. Yeah. And it's been realistically three years since I, certainly I, and I do a lot of events. <laughs> I do a lot of events. Um, but it's the first time I've done an event like this in the sort of post-pandemic world and um and obviously being a harry spot pot harry potter specific i have lost the ability to speak to this weekend <laughs> harry Good potter successful. specific <laughs> event uh in the in the post in the post pandemic world but also in the post july 2020 world yeah. um yeah. i was and and knowing how much i've loved the fandom and leaky especially over the last god knows how many years now I was a little bit scared of how how it was going to be and how it was going to compare to what I remembered it being in 1919 when it was like as you say at the peak of like uh, it was the 10th anniversary of Leaky it was like it was a big thing um, and I'm so relieved that it is <laughs> that it's this and this is what it's, it this is what it is and if anything it feels stronger and much more focused I um, agree with like you. we were, I think we were still in the kind of Potterhead woo like mood totally. in 2019, and now we're like, no, we are, we are here for a purpose, and that is to keep this thing going on the right course for the next forever. And and yeah, I'm very relieved, very relieved about that. We've all lived in a kind of like, is it okay to do? Yeah. You know, um, and <laughs> it's very, okay. it's it's wonderful, and I don't want to um, let go of this community ever so what's what sorry you look like you're oh i was just gonna say it's i think it's just a testament to something that i've always thought about leaky con even pre all the jk rowling terrible tweet stuff is just with me coming so late to the fandom just after going to a couple leaky cons just attending them i was like oh this is what has kept it going like none of her yeah. the, none of the like post canon like no one's like god curse child so great <laughs> uh, or, oh i love that second fantastic beast movie it's like <laughs> 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 so, uh, it was to me, even pre all this stuff, it was just what's keeping Harry Potter going year and year and year afterwards is the community. And I feel like the personified version of that is coming to LeakyCon and seeing all the people who are so lovely and so kind and want to spend an hour talking about like the most tiny detail in the yeah. series. And it's just great. It's just nerds being their truest, nerdiest self. And it's so fun. And that's just something I always perceived. But the JK thing gives it just a new perspective of like, 
it's it's that same feeling but in a different way and almost like a more impressive way of like people have really rallied together to make sure that when you think of Harry Potter you think of this you think of your friends you think of your memories you think of like the good stuff and you don't have to wash all those memories away because the author's been tweeting transphobic stuff for two and a half years uh, oh. so it's or I guess two full years but it's just nice in that regard, not even just fandom stuff, but also just like why we're all here. It's just great to see. And it's a nice relief and a nice reminder of just like, right, this is why we do it. This is why we all gather because everyone here is really nice. <laughs> you are, you're really nice. <laughs> so what's the favorite thing you've done this weekend? <laughs> I mean, karaoke was, yeah, I mean, oh my karaoke was one. <laughs> Both times was a, was a very special thing. Um, because and, and I'm gutted we didn't get to it, and I think this is this is something now that we've tried it. This is the fir this is the first time doing karaoke at Leaky, um, and there were people on the list we just didn't get to because we didn't have enough time. <sighs> Lexi, <laughs> <laughs> poor Lexi, who sat in the front. Lexi's row. got the first slot <laughs> in 2023. <laughs> Or at Lexi, both yeah. karaoke times, was the next person in line when mm. we ran out of time at both sessions. I, it's just gutting. Anyway, but like we had somebody who was cosplaying Dobby who was going to get up and sing Creep by Radiohead <laughs> that I was desperate to see. Uh, we had Gilderoy Lockhart singing You're Welcome from Moana whilst Amazing. handing out signed photos of himself. So good. Like... That is what this is about yeah. for me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that, yeah, that, I've had a blast doing that this weekend. Yeah. I think my favorite uh, was finally getting to do the thing that I had planned, which ended up being the Birdie Bots yeah, interview challenge, which I did with fun. you and Afshan and, uh, and Stanislav. It was, like, it, was, it was a big thing for me just because it was after doing 2019, it was the first time I got to like submit programming that wasn't just doing Potterless Live on stage. And I put a lot of thought and work into it and spent hours in my hotel room, you know, creeping on everyone's Instagram to find very specific <laughs> photographs about them and, and interesting questions. So to finally have this idea that had been submitted in, you know, like early 2020, <laughs> early 2020 <yeah. laughs> for, for whatever July 2020 was supposed to be, for two years later for it to finally happen and then for it to work well was like, okay, cool. Like, this was a good idea. This was a fun time. Um, so it was nice. Well, I have, sorry. Good. Do you have a favorite part? The oh, favorite thing God, that you yeah. did? Yeah. Favorite part. God. Uh, the ball. I, Honestly, the ball for me, it's such a moment where it's easy to, rem it's, not easy to remember that um, joy is a thing that we should intentionally do. Yeah. Um, joy is so key in ways that it just looks like everybody's just dancing, but they're doing more than that. They're uh, bonding with people, they're laughing together, they're having fun, they're sealing a weekend of memories, and they're being reminded of the joy inherent in what we do in the joy in the world. So I, I say it every time, but I, I always walk around the ball and just watch and just take it in. I hope that's not creepy, but I just, I just I enjoy it. I'm just like, you look like you're dancing with abandon. I appreciate that. <laughs> and I move on. No, no, no. But the, the ball is, it's always a moment for me. So yeah. So I have a couple things I want to do here. One is I said this earlier, and ever since I said it, I've been bombarded with them. I'm very happy about it. Um, who has ribbons they want to give? Still. Last moments. I would love some ribbons. What are some favorite ribbons that you all have collected? Oh, I have. Um, somebody else start. I'll get my, I'll right, get so my because, So the ribbon culture here, we have to get the, actually clearer about this. Everybody makes them. Attendees make them. Vendors make them. And they just start collecting. And you have really funny things like... Um, one that says, our flag means Avada Kedavra is one of my favorites, um, which was pretty great. Um, I have one for Kowalski's Bakery. Right? Isn't that great? I got um, uh, our friend Joseph made I Love Leaky Con. It's like having friends. Oh, I know. No. There was really good ones. What are some of your faves? I like the person that came up to us with um, the mischief and managed ones and handed mischief to Charlie, then handed managed to me. I was That's like, well done, you got the brand of the podcast. Congratulations. Uh, That's so good. <laughs> I know. We were like, Very good. Um, yeah, and I like that the first one someone handed me was Evanesco Transphobia. That's what I was going to yeah, say. Literally, yeah. totally at the end here. I actually, I asked my assistant to go find one for me <laughs> because I couldn't, I didn't know where it was. I didn't know the booth. <laughs> Running around trying one. to find it. Someone gave me a, a very Potter musical one theme that said, ten, ooh, 10 points to Dumbledore, <laughs> which was a good one. <laughs> Very nice. 
uh, Vanessa has run away with my <laughs> lanyard. So, but I have, I had there's, there's, there's um, the, the one on the top of mine, the first one I got, which seems very apt this weekend again, is the Protect Trans Witches and Wizards yeah. one. Um, and then, but for comedy value, further down, I have two ribbons which go together, a bit like Mischief Managed. And one says, people will think you're... This one, yeah. And then a, about three and a half feet later on my ribbon lanyard, up to something. Uh, <laughs> I still have to put the second one on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I have a couple of games to play because it's Pottercast and we like games. So I don't know who saw the trivia thing. Oh, ribbons. Hold on, we have ribbons. Oh, she has oh, a Oh, you do? Oh, oh thank you. Um, you can please go go ahead and give them out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Ooh. you so much. We must all face the choice between mm. what is right and what is easy. Oh. Yes, we must. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. you, sweetheart. <laughs> okay, so um, for those who didn't see the trivia thing, it was, <laughs> it was real hard for the actors. <laughs> um, which we should have. They let themselves down and nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we would do it here with y'all, but I think maybe we can add a fan ringer to each side. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Um, yes. So why don't sure. y'all pick a teammate and y'all pick a teammate? Okay. I, oh my gosh. I can't see. I can't see. I know it's hard. Is that Rhonda? Uh, yes, come here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go with, I, yes. Uh, yeah, you don't know, comedy. Yes, the comedy look turned around and said, yes. "Not me. It's yes. you. Yes, it's you. It's you. Yes, Gr Griffin, <laughs> Gryffindor headscarf. Hey, yes, come join Are you us. This team? No, I'm Team Hannah. Ha ha. Uh, we win. <laughs> right here. You we call dibs. Hello. Hi. Do you, um, you you got the Raven. No, <laughs> <laughs> but they're similar. We're getting you chairs. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, thank you. Welcome Hello. back. <laughs> oh. Are you good yeah, at trivia? I saw others. Hold on. Okay, so good. I've read the books once. Grab your chair. These questions, these questions get harder as we go, uh, so don't be too fooled by the first one. And we're gonna, we're gonna, how should how should we do it? You just you just raise your hand first. Somebody raises their hand first. Sure. Yeah. Seems fair. Yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna see who, who who raises their hand first. Ready? Is it on? I gotta see. I gotta stand where I can see everybody real easy. Hold on. If you know it, you know it. It's nerve wracking. Okay. We're not gonna. We're gonna start. We're gonna start soft. Easy one. You ready? What is a Dursley's address? What? Chris did it. Uh, if I heard you correctly, for Privet Drive. Yes. Yeah. Cool. I, I will speak it. louder. It's is this so better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What are the three forbidden curses? Ooh. That was Rhonda. Crucio Imperio Avada Kedavra. Amazing. What was your name? Krista. Krista, okay. All right. That's a point and a point. What is Voldemort's greatest fear? Krista? Step. Correct. Oh, I was going to say shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Sunglasses, because like, he has oh, them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, correct. Bringing a now, lot to I, you team, know what? I would have taken that answer, I think. <laughs> OK. What's the name? This is actually still pretty easy. What's the name of the dance that takes place in Goblet of Fire? Yep. The Yule Bull. Yes, <laughs> oh. correct. I was going right. to say hop like a hippie. All right, so we're at... Two Thank two. you. Thank you, audience. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> Math, not my strong suit. How does Harry catch his first snitch? Mike. In his mouth. In his mouth. Um, two, three? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, okay, here we go. Name one substance that can be used to destroy, <laughs> destroy a horcrux. Ah! Basilisk venom. That correct. Uh, another point. Name another one. Friendly fire or whatever. Fiendish fire, whatever <laughs> yes, it's called. Correct. Like fiendish, correct. Fire. Like fiendish fire. fire. I know Harry Potter. <laughs> you do. So we'll say that's, yeah, sure. Let's say that's two points. So that's. Four to three. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't have to do math. I want to oh, note nice. that. What? We have our front row official scorekeepers. Official, amazing. <laughs> thank you, Lexi. Thank you. I don't know your name, but thank you. <laughs> Melissa, amazing. See, I'm doing, I'm doing the scorekeeping too. <laughs> um, but I would like to note that it says on this, um, A is Basilisk Venom or Fiend Fire, and B is 
Avada Kedavra is not a substance. Mm. So yeah. that was a good note. Whoever made that note, thank you very much. <laughs> um, I think it was my assistant. Yep. Uh, what kind of dragon does Harry fight during the Triwizard Cup? Ah! Hungarian Horntail. Correct. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm not even going to ask because they're on it. <laughs> I know. We got to go quicker. How do you free a house elf? All of you. One I think. What do you guys think? Chris? Chris. Okay. <laughs> um, I think this is bias. Yeah. <laughs> you give it clothing. Correct. Them These clothing. These are still They're pretty not easy, I have to say. Yeah. So we're going to do this the second game, too. But, okay. Um, what sort of dragon is Norberta? Norwegian Ridgeback. Correct. Oh, yep. oh this just got actually... From very hard to easy to less to very hard, so get ready. What color did Hermione turn the leaves of the Weasley's crabapple tree? Wow. Gold. Wow. <laughs> I had no idea that happened. Great job. Ever. She turned them gold and purple. Oh. I thought it was just well, gold. What she, book was that? Seven. seven. I like, Why? Oh, Why did she do that? Oh, the funsies, the wedding? you know. Her, little birthday. random times. <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't go. For the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> the giggles. <laughs> this one's real easy. What is Draco Malfoy's son's name? Oh, Scorpius. Correct. Yes, correct. All right, you ready? Last one. Chris, this one's for you. <laughs> what statue is outside the prefect's bathroom? Oh, got hard. Oh, it's somebody the bewildered. Boris, Boris the bewildered. Rhonda! <laughs> Amazing! Wow. That was it! I think we have a winner. Yeah, well correct. done. Sorry we couldn't bring more to the table. And it's, we have, we blame us. Good. Blame us. Yeah. It's our fault. But we're going to give you one for playing. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You guys still get your t shirt. I do? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> we don't. You no, do. you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get two more contestants for our next thank game. You. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, y'all pick your team. Ooh. No, no, we need them for the next game. Oh, okay. Yeah, not yet. Oh, we're picking okay. another. Oh, sorry. Are we picking again? Yes. Yeah. Um, can we have Melissa, please? <laughs> oh, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, like, wavy hand. Yes, you. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you again, the person looking behind them. I'm going with the Ravenclaw this time, Mike. I think smart, it might be smart price. play. Trivia, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have, I approve. I approve. Color. <laughs> there you are. All right. Can you hear me better back here or better over there? Hi. Here actually works better. She works than better. Your, hey. Yeah, close to it. I have to watch your hands. So, all right. Hey. This is. Nice to meet you. Who said it? Who said it? Okay. Books only. Yes. Okay. Right. Oh. It's how we play here at LeakyCon. Okay. Who okay. said it? Right. Quotes. So I'm gonna say a quote. Let me finish the quote. Get the hand. Raise, oh, no, you know what? If you know it, raise your hand, even if I haven't finished the quote. Okay, you ready? For those select few who possess the predisposition, I can teach, uh, okay, Chris. That's Snape. That is Snape. Yes. How to bewitch the mind That's and ensnare good. the senses. Okay. Oh, this one's easy. Not my daughter, you bi <laughs> That. Who did it? Who did it? <laughs> I think it was Mike. That would be Molly Weasley. That was Molly Weasley, okay. <laughs> A quote which did have me genuinely react when I read it. They can do that in this book? <laughs> I thought that was against the rules. I think that was all of us. Yeah. 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 It's hard. It is hard to see whose hands are coming up okay, from back yeah, here. So we got you. I want to go. I want to go back over here. All right. You ready? Just because you have the emotional range of a... It's a Hermione. It's absolutely Hermione. Okay. Never trust... Anything that can think for it, ah, da, da, Melissa. Ron. Nope. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Minus Arthur. one. Jeffrey Moore. Arthur Weasley. <laughs> it is still a Never trust anything that can think for itself. If you can't see where it keeps its brain, that was book two. Having a weirdly specific rule for Ginny Weasley. Um, <laughs> two, two. Okay, this one is pretty key. Indifference and neglect often do much more damage than, okay, Melissa. Dumbledore? That is Dumbledore. Much more oh. damage than outright dislike. It's true. Absolutely true. When in doubt, go to the library. Yes. Hermione. 
No. <gasps> yes, Hannah. Oh. Ron. Ron. Oh. That's what Hermione does. When in doubt, yes. go to the library. The Ron yeah. Stan gets it. But fair. Fair, yeah. fair thought. Yeah. They <laughs> did. Did she ever say that in the movies? I don't think so. No. Thank God. Okay. All right. I like this one. Last one. Last one. Where are we points wise? Four to two. Thank you, because I think our scorekeeper is playing. Okay. All right, we got to get this one right twice. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get it right twice. You ready? <laughs> Once again, you show all the sensitivity of a blunt axe. There's a clue. Yes, Mike? Hermione? <laughs> nope. Okay. No, that was my guess, too. Can you say it again? Once again, you show all the sensitivity of a blunt axe. There is a clue in the quote. Don't you dare. I hear you. Blunt axe. It's going to ruin my day if yes. get this. nearly headless Nick. Oh! <laughs> he knew it. Well a done. Real, a real hard one in the end there. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you all for playing. Here is you, if this is not the right size for you, they will change it at the store. Thank you, though. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. If it's not the right size, they will thank change you. it. Thank, thank our contestants. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. Well done. I have one more game that I'd like you all to play. Okay. All right? We used to do this on Pottercast Tour back in 2007 when we were going everywhere before the last book came out. And it's basically a, wand, uh, a spell game. And all you do is you match off and you shout spells until somebody can't think of a spell. Oh, no. Cool. And you, oh, yeah. Can't, okay, yeah. and you can't repeat yourself. Does that sound doable? I didn't tell, by the way, I didn't tell them any of this. I'm ready. <laughs> was All right. I'm so to... sorry in advance, All right. Hannah. All right. oh. Oh, wait, do we, what do we do? Huh? Is it anyone from the team or do we go one? One, one, one once. You're going to stand up here with your mic and you're going to face each other, proper duel-like. <laughs> Mike's so ready. And Mike is just yes. on this. <laughs> He's doing his hair. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Which of you is going to play? Oh, wait, it's okay. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. One on one. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Oh, wait, who starts? <laughs> uh, I'll go for Zagreb. Mike starts. Mm -hmm. The Jelly Legs Curse. <laughs> Expelliarmus. Nox. Crucio. Expecto Patronum. Avada Kedavra. Sectum Sempra. Sanguio. Lumos. <laughs> How long have I got? Um, Not that long. Oh. <laughs> do I stay or is it just um, Chris? Do you want to battle until the end? Battle everybody or? I don't we? know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're pretty. We... Let's let's have let's have you two go now, and then you can. And then I'll face the winner. Battle yeah, the yeah. winner. You can battle. I was not keeping notes of what they did. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fastest one I've ever seen. <laughs> Happens like boom, boom, boom. That was we really were good. Ready to rock. Ready. Uh, you go first. Wingardium Leviosa. Avada Kedavra. Crucio. Bombada. <laughs> oh, come on. Sectum Sempra. Lumos. Alohomora. Uh, did we do Nox? I can't remember. Not that now. Yep, good. Yeah. Aguamente. Oh, nice. Um, uh... I think Chris wins this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chris and Mike battle to the death. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Can I just say I always wanted to Avada Kedavra of Percy, so <laughs> 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 I needed that. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Yeah. All right, you guys ready? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay, ready? One, two, three, go. Flagrante. A Gorgio, Flipendo, <laughs> um, Lumos Maximus, oh, oh. Stupefy, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> uh, that one's Bulgarian. Mike uh, wins. Oh, okay. Mike wins. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank champion. You. I don't have a shirt for you. This is shameful for us. He's read the books once. <laughs> <laughs> but in a very for in, years. A, in a very detailed manner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could not play that game currently. I have not read them in a while. But yesterday somebody actually came up to the 
a signing desk with a list. I think it was yesterday. Somebody came up with a list of all of the spells from the Harry from the Wizarding oh, World. It's really it's Empire. a lot. It's so yeah. many. And I'm, I was literally desperately trying to remember random spells. <laughs> like, what did I see on that piece of paper? Yeah. Remember and Gorgio before now, well. I've sat down. It's when you're up there and yeah. the yeah. light. Oh, it's yeah. a lot of pressure. It's a head. We did something like this at BroadwayCon where I, I had to name um, every, like, it, it was like a list game. So you come up, you get a category, and you have to, like, go down the list. And I knew everybody's everything. And then I got up there, and they asked me to name Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals. And I'm still salty about it because I know about Phantom and the Roller Skates one. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> We have a question that we really love that we used in our pub quiz. Um, it's name two characters that aren't related that share a first name. Wait, let me think. I think we counted ten in the end because someone added one to us. No, 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 no. We added a couple. No, we added two. Yeah, we had to get on our knees and bow to people. Yeah. So I think there's that, eleven. That was the arrangement. We got on our knees and did a worship. Two characters with the same first, first name. name that aren't related. We think there's eleven. Oh. Can you guys think? Sorry, we kind I can't of think like of a single one, but then I? I don't. Think they'd <laughs> but you've never read the books. You don't know what Harry Potter is. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say? There's, is there another Harry somewhere in the books? No, no. no I was just being mean to Chris. Yeah, you <laughs> uh, you know, the average, average. <laughs> there's got to be another Ronald someplace. Nope. No. Statistically, is there another Michael? <laughs> nope. Wow. I'm impressed. Send there's yourself. a really obvious one. Yeah, there's a one. really <laughs> obvious one. Wait, wait. Come on, guys. Oh, now I'm mad. There's an obvious Oh, one. Tom, the Toothless Walnut, oh, and Tom yeah. Riddle. Oh, uh. <laughs> There's another incredibly easy one. Is there an Arthur? No. no. Think main characters. Wait. Oh, there's two Hermione's, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Draco, there's not a Luna. The, 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 Epilogue oh. did not oh. count. No, we that doesn't count. We said Albus <laughs> five times. We like, were not playing Albus's. Epilogue. <laughs> oh, it's not Epilogue. We no, were no. trying to avoid epilogue. We basically said no one who was named after someone they were related to or who died. <laughs> or who died. Yeah, so not Those Albus, Albus. Yeah. Albus. No, but we did miss the who died, and then someone was like, Albus and Albus. And we were like, oh, yeah, they're not related. Yeah, really. yeah, they're not actually related. Um, main characters. No, not main. Did we say main? Oh, she well, just, I said, just main. said main. I just said because we were talking about the Albus uh, one. Okay. Oh, it's the Albus one. Okay. Sorry. Um, we can stop this Who's very mean game. Who's the guy that likes a healthy breeze around his privates? What's his first name? <laughs> Archie. Archie. Archibald. Is there more than one no. Archibald? Is there more than one Phileas? Is there more than one Minerva? Do you Is want us to tell you yes. something? Oh, tell me. Oh, tell oh. me. It's going to go on forever. Ernie McMillan and Ernie the Bus Driver. Yay! Oh, well done. <sighs> Amazing. Is there another one? There's uh, Mary McDonald and Mary Catamol. There's, I cannot remember the two, but the one that someone gave to us that we were so impress impressed with, there's two Cassandras yep. mentioned. Wow. Jean-Michelani and Cassandra, Bl Bl I can't remember the last name, Vablatsky, right? Yep. Yeah. There's Ted Tonks and Ted the Muggle Newsreader. Of oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I've forgotten all the others we wrote for there's our of course, an, yeah. Nic oh, Nicholas Pomel Nic and Nicholas Nic 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 to Minzy yeah. Pompington. Yeah. This is a tricky little question. I love it. Yep. Yeah. Love it. You That's can good. borrow it sometime. You can borrow that one. We're going to do it. I don't know. Maybe next time. Um, well, now this will be on podcast. So uh, <laughs> we're going to just chat. And you guys, if you want to just come up and talk about anything, talk about the weekend, you, even if it's not a question. I love doing this at, at, at late, late podcast. Is, oh, no, that's just somebody walking. Okay. Well, you can do Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'll just go and put this microphone back on the stand so there is actually something for them to talk oh, into. Oh, back up there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When is the next LeakyCon? It's in Denver, actually. <laughs> in October? In October, October 15th, 16th, that weekend. Um, or maybe 14th, 15th. One of it those. starts on the 14th. It starts, so 14th, yes. 15th, Somebody's 16th. Somebody's going to tell me. It's been, listen, it's been a time. <laughs> um, yeah. This year. I'm very excited for that one. And then we're going to have the information about next year's soon. <laughs> 2023 soon, but I will tell you that I believe it will just be the one, as opposed to the two split. Okay, okay. That may change, but for now, <laughs> it, is, it is just it is just the one. Yes, hello. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm a Ravenclaw from Florida. Um, I already gave Chris one of these yesterday, you did. <laughs> but I have flowers I made from the books. If you guys would like one, yes. Okay. <laughs> Which books? I mean, I know Harry Twilight Potter. series. Catcher in the <laughs> Rye. <laughs> Pride and Prejudice. Please come up. Please come up. It was a very friendly Potter situation. Yeah, sorry about this chair. Yeah, please, please come up. What was your name? 
Ashley, so nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. And thank you. I just wanted to. I didn't get a chance to say it, but thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, you know how tired oh, I am. I'm so I'm really sure we can find it. Thank you. How am so I going to put this in a suitcase? I'm scared. <laughs> You'll have to wear it like this behind your ear, like a very plane. dainty lady. <laughs> We're literally going to be sat for eight hours on the plane. Yeah, don't squish the flower <laughs> on the night eight hour flight home. <laughs> Legitimately, though, you probably could put it in the backpack and like have it stick down the yeah, side. That's, that's probably my approach. That's I just so cool. I have to let you know how tired I am. I got this flower, and I don't know who saw it, but I put my microphone to the <laughs> And what would you like to say? <laughs> <laughs> that is post-con in a nutshell. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even tell you. Oh, do I see somebody standing yes. over there? Hello. Hello. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> um, I am a Slytherin from Florida. And I know we kind of talked about this in one of the panels that I saw, but what Marvel character do you think is a Gryffindor? Most of them, I would assume. Yeah, Thor, yeah. <laughs> Thor, right? Like, Thor must be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know nothing and would say most of them. Who's not, is my question. Oh. Doctor Strange is not. Banner. Black Widow is not. Mm -hmm. Bruce Banner's right. Spider-Man is Hufflepuff. Spider-Man is Hufflepuff. I was yeah. about to say Spider-Man's Hufflepuff. Yeah. That's interesting. Tom Holland. Tom Holland's sure. a Hufflepuff. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. I watched yeah. the Uncharted movie on the way out. You should watch that. Mm. Loki's a Slytherin, Loki. come on. Not just because he wears the green. <laughs> um, who else, who else, who else? It would help I if I'd seen, seen more yet. than two Marvel films. Yep. Uh, this is where I am right <laughs> now. I'm like, is Iron oh. Man Marvel? Yeah, he would be a Gryffindor. I'm like, right I watch Gryffindor. Spider Man and that's. I don't know if he's a Gryffindor. He's a Ravenclaw. <laughs> he's he's kind of smart, but he's, he's quite yeah. pompous. As a, he's as a Gryffindor sure myself, yeah. He's, yeah. Is he's very much okay with being the main I'm sorry. character. I'm sorry. All houses can be pompous. True, 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 true. That's Hufflepuff, even? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ernie. Ernie. Iron Man. Oh. Mm hmm. No, He's a Ravenclaw. He's like one of the smartest dudes. Yeah. He made himself a heart. Got a nothing. <laughs> Dude, dude's a Ravenclaw. <laughs> he stuck Lots it in of his possibilities. Chest. There's one I okay. Anything. Oh, yes, it's me. Uh, uh, let's go this side. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Heather. Hi, Heather. Uh, yeah. I started loving coming to these conventions through GeekyCon. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, <laughs> I was very young. Uh, so. Cut. Do we have any plans on ever bringing that back? Because oh I love the mixes of fandoms. Mm -hmm. So I will say that um, when we changed, oh, look what I did. Uh, when we changed the name of, Le so, okay, a little bit of League Account history for those who may not, I don't, I don't know if you knew. Um, when we thought the fandom would be maybe changing or, or dying down or whatever, in 2013, we started bringing more other fandoms, still calling it LeakyCon. Uh, and we, you know, we had uh, Anthony came and did the Rent song, which yeah. the Love Even When, which was ridiculous. Which I've still never seen him. I've never actually met Anthony. Yet. Wait, what? This is ridiculous. This is weird. Yeah, I know, but um, anyway. yeah you two would love each other. Um, uh, Anthony, rap. Um, and um, we started bringing in more other fandoms. And then we were like, all right, well, for longevity, we should change the name. We should go to GeekyCon. It's more geeky, blah, blah, bad idea. Nobody knew what we were doing. However, we are a much different, in a much different kind of situation now. I love GeekyCon so much, and there's such a huge place for it in my heart. It may come back one day. We're always trying to figure out how to make it work. Um, I will say that it's, it's possible we what we were doing in 2013 was working. It was still very much Harry Potter and very much what it is while allowing room for other things. So we might go in that direction a little bit more so that people can not be not all just fans of one thing, but still be, be uni unified under like magic and, you know. I don't know if that, if we'll rebrand again because it, I'm pretty scarred from that process. <laughs> I'm pretty sad about it still, um, that, you know, but um, maybe, maybe, my answer is maybe. How about that? I like that answer, so it's okay. Yeah. Thank you. I feel like Leaky is now, like, at, at least to me, like, LeakyCon is so just its own thing, yes. as opposed to, like, yeah. it's not like it's called, like, Harry Potter Book Convention. Exactly. Like, it's enough where you could be like, oh, LeakyCon, we do other things now, too. Yeah. Like, I think yes. it would be fine. And yeah. even if you look at the logo, like, all you got to do, you know, you could, like, add, like, a slight horizontal line. You flip the A and you flip it the other way. Like, you can do, <laughs> it's not too well, far to like Leaky to Geeky. freelance marketing work for you right now. He's like, <laughs> hey, how do I promote this? Somewhere in the building, you can hear Jordan, uh, 
uh, saying, don't tilt our logo. Oh. <laughs> you tell that he's married to a graphic designer? <laughs> That's really but, what she yeah. says, are they? You're married to a graphic designer, aren't you? No, uh, an architect, but she does all the graphic design for oh, the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that yeah, makes basically. a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it w I, when we were starting to bring other stuff in a while ago, I was very nervous about it, you know, because it's like, will people even, will people be angry? And you get, you get a little thing here and there, but it actually was wonderful. Um, and so... We'll see. We'll see what the future brings. There's something quite refreshing about like having a, a what it, what is a, something that's grown up through the Harry Potter fandom, but then being able to kind of bring in Harry Potter. I mean, and that's what's happened, isn't it? You know, now with now podcasts have become a huge thing, and as YouTube has, and like like it's not just been about the actors or the academics. It's be, it's become much more about everybody else who sort of has this creative input into the community. But then the space, I think, for like for for Harry Potter adjacent stuff, you know, and I know there's been like YA lit tracks on various yeah. different things over the, like things like that. Like, I've it's always space, isn't there, for sort of, and but even even if they're not officially there, they're still there. Like, yeah, absolutely. I was just saying that, like, even just look at the question that was just asked in all the other panels, where it's like yep. sorting Disney characters or doing this kind of thing, or like any time I'm talking about, like, people want to compare to dress like Percy Jackson, Harry Potter. Like, there's so many like ways you can try to link them that. I think it's very natural to get more of the stuff because there are other books and we have it's very read the rare other books. if you're nerdy about one thing, you're not nerdy about right, other yeah. nerdy <laughs> things, right? It's like it's not like I am nerdy about Harry Potter and nothing else. I've never read another media ever. <laughs> Some of the cosplay also has been crossover. I've seen it just this weekend. It's been pretty cool. How would you all feel about that? Would you still be into it? Okay, okay. This is why I hate when people like attack Harry Potter fans nowadays and they're like, just read another book. It's oh like, I do. Enough, I have read other books. Yeah. <laughs> you just I will stack Harry Potter fans reading list against non Harry Potter fans reading yeah. list. Yeah, yeah. bite me. Yeah, bite me. It's yeah, also bite me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi, my name is Melissa. I'm a Ravenclaw from Minnesota. And I have an old school canon conundrum for you. Oh, canon conundrum. This is a segment we used to do on, on you ready? It's going to be a question about why something is in the Harry Potter verse that you have to talk about. Okay, okay. So in Half-Blood Prince, Harry does a detention with Snape where he's going through old detention records and there's the marauders are kind of appearing a lot. And I measured that up where it lands in the prince's tale and it happens right after Dumbledore tells Snape that Harry has to die. So my question is, was Snape trying to be nice? <laughs> no. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> in a prince's tale, what you're saying is, yeah. so right the after the timeline where Dumbledore tells Snape that Harry has to die, something happens in that timeline? Place. So in the prince's tale, when he tells Snape that Harry has to die, in the timeline of where that would take place in Half-Blood Prince, it's when Harry does that detention with Snape where he's going through the old detention records. Of, and it has his father and Lupin and Sirius. And Harry kind of thinks Snape is being mean to him and making him see all those names. But I was wondering if that was Snape's like misguided way of trying to be kind to him. Interesting. <laughs> what do y'all think? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, think <it's, laughs> I think it's a really cool theory, but just knowing what I know about Snape, a garbage human. Yeah. Uh, I, I, would, I would say that's, like, that's giving the benefit of the doubt to him. Regardless, like, I think that is an incredibly creative like, way to think about it. If it was anyone else, maybe. But I think Snape is just still mad about stuff that he hasn't gone over, yeah. like gotten over in high school, even though he's 40 years old. So you know I think what? it's just him having a grudge. I, I think it, I think it's worth point. You know, like, sorry, forty-one. Only at League of Con. He's forty-one exactly. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> but that, it, that's slightly terrifying. That I'd never thought about that before. I always assumed they were all Chris about. Chris has a crisis live on stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the first time. But like. Yeah, it is terrifying. Yeah. But that's that's kind of my age. It's not far off. Yeah, imagine beefing with a fifteen-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine having the brain space to do that? Can we get, is there someone that's 15, 15 that we can have a yeah, like now. I'm Let's feed into Chris's crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, fight you a child. Money, nice. Maybe it was just child. on Snape's mind. Like, maybe that's why it came to the front I of the actually, mind. It could just be that. You've just identified a way that I think Snape just became worse to me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Because he just found out that this 
kid has to die to save the rest of the world, and it's why he exists. It's his whole life. So what does he do? Here, spend an hour with me going through records about, like, you have precious few hours on this earth, and not only am I going to keep you in detention, I'm going to destroy all your, your, your ideas about your parents and your heroes before you go. That is, wow. Yeah. That is on the level of when he said that thing about Hermione's teeth. That's Nothing's like, worse than the Hermione's teeth. Worse. It's so Nothing's unforgivable. Worse. Unforgivable. Ugh. 14-year-old girl. No, but it's okay because he loved Lily. Oh. <laughs> he had an unhealthy, toxic relationship to Lily. He should have moved on. That's true. <laughs> Absolutely true. Don't, the, the comment was you don't use slurs against people you love. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. well, yeah <laughs> I, ideally. <laughs> but, you know. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm Amelia from Texas. I'm a Gryffindor. Uh, and I had a question for all five of you, actually. After Harry Potter, what is your second favorite like book or Ooh. fandom? Oh. Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the whole answer. <laughs> I made some yes. TikToks making musicals out of the Harry Potter series using Taylor Swift songs, and, mm. and they went viral, and I found people, and it was a good time. <laughs> and she made the Spotify playlist to match. You can find it on our TikTok. Yeah, self plug. Um, I need a moment, because I'm having a crisis, because I, I love all the things. Yeah. Okay, and um, while you're thinking, I have ribbons for the three of you on the Yay! Left of this stage. <laughs> Ooh, you haven't this given I already her. gave. I thought you were I saying, cool. I only want to give ribbons to three of them. <laughs> only to the ladies. Um, <laughs> come get them while you guys talk. Mm. I d I'm, yeah, I, I am in crisis mode on this one. Yeah, I mean, I will, I will say, I'm currently, I've been reading the Percy Jackson books, and they're really good. <laughs> they're on, they're, they're very next good. on my list of yeah, things. I mean, I've, just, I've just finished, well, I'm right in the middle of the last book of a series that I just discovered by accident because it was cheap on my Kindle and I've been traveling a lot. Uh, but it's the, it's Alexandra Bracken. Uh, does anybody know those? The, the Darkest Minds ones? Yeah. I've really enjoyed those. I thought they were really cool. Um, oh, Narnia. I've done Narnia several times. I love Narnia. Um, I wanted to, do, I wanted to, Narnia was my first, I did Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was the first ever play I was in, ever. Um, <gasps> Were you the Lion, the Witch, or the Wardrobe? I was <laughs> <laughs> All three. <laughs> All three. I actually do have a friend who's a drag queen who did a drag show called The Lying Bitch in the Wardrobe. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's another story. Anyway, uh, no, I was Edmund, and I, I was... Ooh. Liked, yeah, I liked it a lot. So, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, Percy Jackson's on my list. They're really good, yeah. And the author does this cool thing called apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> so, I does yeah. this cool thing called, like... Increasing Learning, diversity and, and, and yeah. also like getting better as time goes on and admitting. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. It's it's very cool. I am lately super obsessed with D and D, just like super D and D nerd. I am in three campaigns. It's absurd. Um, I watch. I've watched almost all of Critical Role. I watch Dimension Twenty. I listen to podcasts, let it, like random small ones to like you know big the big popular ones, um, because what's so incredible about it, especially after this time we've lived in, where one person's um, opinions about work has meant so much is that it is a collaborative story. Every single DD campaign is a collaborative story. Everybody has a choice in how things go. So a couple of things on that note, on if you've listened to the podcast before, you know that we have something called Roll Nine and Three Quarters. Well, um, how I got into DD was that Frankie came to me and John and said, I want to DM, y'all have never played. I'd like listened to some stuff and watched some stuff, but I'd never really played. And Frankie uh, helped us create characters and, and, and do the whole thing. And we have this adorable little campaign that we're like 12 year old at Hogwarts, like transfer students at Hogwarts. And it's, you can find it on, on podcasts at wherever. But you know, some things happened and Frankie as a queer man is like not really jazzed about creating inside the canon anymore. And um, so it's been, on, it's been on a little bit of a pause for a while while we kind of regain our footing. And over the pandemic, as I've gotten deeper into D&D, so did my husband. <laughs> and my husband, we'd be watching like Critical Role or something, he'd be on his phone, and I'd be like, dude, why are you always on your phone? Like, what, what, you know, what's going on? Um, and then he'd start saying things like, about Matt Mercer, like, like who we love endlessly, but he said like, he forgot the sneak attack damage or, you know, whatever. Or, or like, he, he didn't add. And I'd be like, dude, are you correcting Matt Mercer right now? But invariably, a couple minutes later, Matt would be like, ah, I forgot the sneak attack damage. And I'd be like, 
hey, honey, are you like maybe a DM? <laughs> and he, it blew the whole, he is, he is like a natural DM. So he's taking it over. He's taking over Roll Down Three Quarters. Oh. And we're creating a new campaign based in a liberal, magical, uh, mid-tier arts school uh, <laughs> <laughs> called Candle Rose College, and it's in the Pacific Northwest. Um, yes. And I can't talk about everybody's characters yet because that's their thing, but I'll tell you that my character is an Asimar Eldritch Knight, uh, which those two things don't go together, um, who is really bad at Eldritch Knighting and has serious ADHD, so it's going to be real fun. So anyway, go check that out. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's coming back soon. I'm going to cheat and say a fandom and a book, because technically you kind of said both. In terms of, like, fandom, Doctor Who, like... Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, David Tennant, Christopher Eccleston, like, you know, it really summed up, like, a period of my life when I was, like, a young teenager, so that will always be in my heart massively. And then in terms of, like, a book, I recently got into Name of the Wind, so the King Killer Chrono Chronicle. I think they're called. Um, yeah, the author is not a transphobe, and it's some of the most like beautifully written like fantasy that I've read in such a long time. Okay. So good. I need I need a book because I'm into the Audible now, so that I actually continue reading books. Yeah. I mean, the the audio book is incredible. The guy that does it is amazing. Amazing. Oh, I, I didn't explain the phone thing from the last story because he was looking stuff up. Just to close that loop. Sorry, mm -hmm. that's how my brain works. <laughs> All right, who is next? Okay, hello, my name is Jules. I am a Gryffindor from Tampa, Florida. And I kind of have like a comment and two questions, if that's fine. Absolutely. Okay, so like my comment is like, this is my first official like con and I've always been like the, the odd one out, the obsession with Harry Potter. So like, I never felt more at home than today. Like Yay. honestly, it was awesome. such a like, oh. and my first panel was with Chris. And like I almost cried when he started to almost cry. It was like I did cry. Okay, I, good. I full on cried. Like a dramatic side. one tear. Like it's fine. It's fine. And then um, my question, my first question was what everyone's houses were. Like what their official sorted houses. Ravenclaw, Gryffindor, yep. Gryffindor, Slytherin, Gryffindor. Oh. Nice. Oh. Three Gryffindors are Ravenclaw and a Slytherin. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good. Yeah. And then my last question was, it's a trivia question, kind of. Oh. Um, do we all know Albus Dumbledore's full name and order? Albus Dumbledore. Albus, yeah, Albus Percival Wolf Wolfric Wolfric Brian, Brian Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Okay, good. We're professional Harry Potter people. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's what my CV what headline is. Professional Harry Potter, Potter person. person. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, legit. <laughs> Yes. yes. Hat. Hi, His head. my name is Meredith. I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm a Ravenclaw. Not originally from D.C., I'm from Kentucky. Oh, I don't need to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, what are the chances LeakyCon is not in Florida next year? Hi. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's it, that's it. I would say very high. <laughs> we love Florida, we've been here a lot. Um, We've already got next year's set, but we, we, we bounce around. That's part of the magic. <laughs> hey, no shade on Florida. I mean, well, some shade on Florida. I'm some sorry. Shade. So Excellent. much shade on Florida in general. <laughs> but it's been a good place for us. But um, actually, the reason we're in Florida this year is because it's the same contract from 2020. We just had to keep pushing it yeah. forward. Yeah. Hello. Wow. Um, hi. My name's Charlene Rosa. I'm a Ravenclaw, and I came from Puerto Rico. Ooh. Thanks. So my question is, what life lesson did you have to learn the hard way? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I, I, mine's really, mine's really actually very sensible and deep, and not a funny answer. But pay your taxes, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> they will come and find you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, w uh, I was going to ask, what life lesson would you tell us? <laughs> but hey, that's good too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't learn from my mistakes, so I'm going <laughs> to not answer this. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. I think lot. I, th I would say that the one that sums up most of the ones that I've learned the hard way is like, just don't lie. Like, telling the truth is so much cleaner. Like, sometimes it's more uncomfortable, but nothing is more uncomfortable than getting caught in a lie. And also, it's never fun to just like have to stress about it. So I think if you had to sum up all the things, it's like just 
try to, it's it's better to try to fight through potential awkwardness behind uh, and for the truth as opposed to like having to keep thing up and put layers on layers on layers. It gets gross and messy. Um, to shut up sometimes, honestly. <laughs> I'm a very I'm very passionate and I get excited and I want to say things and I interrupt and it's all comes from excitement. It's also served me very well in a lot of ways. Um, but a lot of learning happens or almost all learning happens when you're being quiet. So um, shutting up and letting other voices and backgrounds and opinions come to the forefront and recognize there's nothing, there's nothing so important you have to say in that moment has been a big lesson. Yeah. I feel like I want to finish on that one, not one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I pick your answer. <laughs> Hello, I'm Angelina Hufflepuff. Uh, well, Griffin Puff. I'm a Griffin Puff. I have um, a comment and a plead. Okay. Uh, um, my plead is please next year LeakyCon in Texas. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Texas. Um, and um, my comment about Percy Jackson is if you don't know. Please, if this is going to be a spoiler, I'm only like five chapters into the third <laughs> books, and it is my job to not know what happens. It's not a spoiler. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's just um, they're making a TV show on Disney+. Yes. yes, I'm very excited yes. for it. And they already have the actor for Percy Jackson. Yeah, they got the actors for the main three, and the author Rick Arden's already yelled at all the people who were racist <laughs> and didn't like that they cast a black girl to play Annabeth. So it's been, uh, it's been good. Rick, Rick Arden proves to be a good dude. Rick Arden. Pretty cool. Yep. 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 Hey, there's magic in uh, uh, the Percy Jackson books. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll mm -hmm. start doing some magic mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot, of, like I think like seven or eight books or more. I don't there's know. So many. There's, there's so many. There's so a lot. Many. It's a very yes. big <laughs> universe. <laughs> Yeah, and there's Rick Riordan Presents where he does this cool thing where he goes, oh, I'm not white, or I, ooh, I'm white, I shouldn't write about every single uh, ah. cultural background, unlike J.K. Rowling and the he Quidditch Throughout the Ages book. Marco Shiro? Yeah, he did. They're writing a book together, and Wild. then he does a thing, Presents, where it's like there's a book about, like, it's African mythology, and it's written by a black man, as if, instead of, like, J.K. Rowling and the Quidditch Throughout the Ages book, where she's like, yeah, the people in uh, the Middle East uh, play Quidditch on magic carpets. That's fine to write in a book, so... <laughs> 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 it's, a, it's a better it's approach. True. Yeah, thank you. We are. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, yeah, he's, yes, yeah. the prior, the presents when they're not written by him, he like finds the authors and he works with and them. And uses but the his Mar incredible. I think the Mark. I think the Mark one he's right co-writing yeah, co though. Like but yeah, the Rick Riordan presents one. He f he finds an author from the cultural background that the mythology is about, and then all he does is kind of like guide them in terms of. Look, uh, hello, here's how you write a successful YA book. He doesn't, like, write the story. Yeah. We are technically over time, but we, we, we're fine. We can still do these, these couple of last questions, but we'll just keep it there. Okay, great. Um, hi, I'm Perrin. I'm a Ravenclaw. And I was wondering, um, like, they're talking about doing HBO Max shows, you know, with Harry Potter. So what kind of show would you want? And if they redid the whole series as a show, who would you cast as the trio? As the trio, well, as the trio is a really difficult question to yeah, ask. How me. well do you know children actors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me just let me just rack my casting directory brain. Um, I, we were talking about this earlier, actually, weren't we? Yep. And I, I, was, I think I think it'll be a fascinating. It'll be a fascinating thing. I think I am certain it will happen. Like mm -hmm. it will happen, and it will be epically huge in the very same way that the new Lord of the Rings stuff on Amazon is going to be enormous and expensive. Mm -hmm like really expensive um but i think what i think i have a feeling that they're going to wait and to, to see how the new lord of the rings thing is taken because because the lord of the rings films like the harry potter films those the actors who played those iconic roles like mckellen playing gandalf like that is etched into everybody's memory whether you've seen lord of the rings or not and i think there's going to be a little bit of are people going to accept a different gandalf character do you know what i mean i think there's going to be a little bit of wait and see quite how we do this based on that. I, that's my completely uneducated <laughs> guess on the matter. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how it pans out though. Um, but I can assure you it'll be expensive and it will be a, probably another 10 years before you see it. <laughs> if, if I had to see a story, I would, I've always wanted to see a, t like a Teddy Tonks or Teddy Lupin story. Mm. Um, just as like 
dad's yeah. a werewolf, mom is a metamorph magus, he's an orphan. Yeah. And I think what would be nice for that story as opposed to doing a prequel thing is that you don't run into that issue as much yeah. where you don't have to make it. Because like we've seen with the Fantastic Beasts films, like it's just so messy trying to make everything line up and all that. So yeah. I would love to see that story written by a different person. Yeah, first of all, <laughs> and take J.K. Rowling out. Yeah. <laughs> take yeah. J.K. Rowling out and then give me the 1980s Marauders yes. themed TV yeah. show. Give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't ever like to see anything unless they do manage to cut J.K. out of it so that I could actually enjoy it but we we do have like a running joke on the podcast that like if and when this happens they need us as canon consultants because <laughs> we the way on our podcast we literally will like blow by blow like map out the scenes of how we would have done it for the films uh we just fix the films um but yeah so they, they need us on board but only if jk rowling is not profiting from it yes Part of it. Thank you. Thank you. And also, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I'm also for it coming back to Texas. <laughs> Y'all yeah, in Texas charm, right? blew our minds. It was all sold out in one day. Everything really is bigger over there. Hi. Um, I'm Lola. I'm from here, but um, I'm a Hufflepuff. And I have like three mini questions. Um, first, is if you've been to um, Universal, like the Harry Potter world, mm -hmm. and then what's your favorite ride, and then your favorite color? Oh, oh nice. <laughs> yes, I went for the first time four or five days ago, and it was great. And I went with her. I had been before, but yeah, it, it's amazing. I really enjoyed the um, the like Hogwarts one with the where it's like part practical effects and part like Same. this oh, 3D. The screen. I didn't. I nearly vomited. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I enjoyed it, because I could tell she was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Me, crying in the corner. I really like the kiddie hippogriff ride that just goes oh, that's down. A good ride. Because I a good am, ride. Yeah. literally have the stomach of a four-year-old and can't cope with anything. But it was very magical. And my favorite color is green. Mine is purple. <laughs> Mine's red, and I love the train one. Uh, I've been to Universal. My favorite ride, probably the Haggard ride. It's very cool. Um, it's, I, with, I won't spoil it, because the ride has spoilers, which is a weird thing to say, but like, you know the part where there's like the big surprise? Uh, one time I was on the ride and then uh, it like kind of broke to where before the surprise there was like a longer pause and I turned to the, my friends behind me who are on the ride and I was like, is something going? And then the surprise happened, so <laughs> it even more fun. Uh, so that would be my favorite ride and uh, my favorite color is pink as portrayed by my shirt. Uh, my favorite ride is it is Forbidden Journey just because it's it's the classic and it's the original and there's something yeah. there's something something cool about it like it's just so out of what you expect a, a roller coaster ride to be I guess um, uh, I haven't done Hagrid's ride yet though I haven't been since the that. queues are yeah. so long yeah. I haven't I haven't been since since that opened so that'll probably be maybe next well next time I'm in Florida which probably won't be that long um, uh, my favorite color is. Like a sort of ton of green, like a, a, a dark green, like an green. emerald, like yeah, forest green. Thank you. Yes, that's exactly it. Yeah. All right, I think we have our last question behind you, or is that, or is that the last question? That was. That was last, it. That was the okay. final question. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for being on Pottercast. Thank you for thank having, you us. having us. Thank you for having us at uh, Leaky. Yeah, all thank of you everything. Thank for coming to LeakyCon, everybody. What a weekend. I feel full. I feel happy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great trip. Be safe. And we'll see you all next time. Follow our social. You'll find out when the next one is next Ooh. year. Where